one of these. We're gonna drain this water down. Four of these. We got a lot more to do here on this pond. One of these. A little over two feet. 30 feet of pure manlyhood. Yeah, that's a word. Aloha, it is your boy, the Hawaiian fish keeper. And yep, you guessed it, it's about time to get back to work to Tiki Falls 3.0. Very popular uh, on my channel right now. Everybody's demanding. It's like you guys are on strike or something. It's like, hell no, we won't go. We want more. We want more. Hell no, we won't show. Trust me, I want to bang this out all in a couple days or so, but you know, it takes time. It takes money, and you know when you're balling on a budget. Plus, digging in that right there took a lot of my energy. I got blisters and bunions and onions and all kinds of things going on right now with my hands. This right there, you can even see the color. See that discoloration right there? Yeah, that's like a really thick, hard clay dirt, and it's a pain in the butt. So we went down another foot or so. Um, I'm really happy on the depth, the size, and what it looks like right now. So let's take a closer look at it. I know I've been updating you guys on other videos, but uh, let's take a look. All right, so I got the shovel in there just so you guys can kind of get a feel of how deep it actually is. Um, I can get a uh, measuring tape, and we're going to go down in here and measure the depth from down. This is the deepest part right here um, to the top right here, which is the ledge, so we can get an idea on how deep this thing really is over here. All right, guys, we are in the bottom here, and here is our measuring tape. If you guys want to know what a real man's measuring tape is, the Fat Max. That's what you need to get, 30 feet of pure manlyhood. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. Anyways, <laughs> let's take a look at this. And we'll just put it down about here, which is the deepest part. It's about a little over two feet. We're going to talk about hydrostatic pressure. I know I talked a little bit about it in other videos. This is our existing pond right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drain this water down, okay? We're gonna go underneath this liner here, as you can see, and we are going to dig this trench all the way through to this pond here. Now we're gonna get a perforated pipe and we are gonna run it through underneath this liner because this is gonna be dug down all the way down here. Okay, we're going to run the perforated pipe underneath this pond liner. Now, let me explain to you hydrostatic pressure. Here, where I live in Wheatland, the soil here, like I said, I talk about it all the time, it's like a hard clay. Now, when we have really heavy rains, that rain will go under the pond liner and gather underneath the pond liner. It will not settle down into the soil or earth. It just takes a long time. It does eventually, but it takes a good four to five days before it settles. It just depends on the rainfall that we get. So big rainfalls here where I live, hydrostatic pressure starts to develop. And what happens is the pond liner starts to bubble up and it just moves everything. So to relieve that pressure, you run that perforated pipe underneath your liner. So we're gonna get out of here and go to one of my favorite places. I'll see you guys in a second. Teleport. Boom, we are here at Home Depot. And this is what we came here for three inch perforated pipe. As you can see, there's holes on it. It's uh, only on the top though. See, there's a set of holes, but on the bottom of the pipe, there's no holes. So this is gonna help us with our hydrostatic pressure. And it is 994, as you can see, three inch by 10 feet long. Let's go ahead and grab one of these. And we gotta get a solid perforated pipe too here as well. This one has no holes on it. And we need to get one of these two as well, which costs the same. Next up, we need four elbows. These are, yep, three inch, 90 degree elbows. We need four of these. So let's go ahead and grab four of these bad boys. All right, we got a three inch drain cap is what we need for 222. This is gonna be for the end of our perforated pipe. Then we need to get a drain sleeve for a three inch by 10 foot. Here we go. Three inch by 10 foot drain sleeve. We're gonna sleeve the perforated pipe and this is $5.80. We'll see you at the house. Boom, we are home just like that. Teleportation in YouTube, it's the best. For you guys, not for me. Anyways, let's go ahead before we get started on this because we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, let's go ahead and change our hats out, all right? Cause you gotta have that Tiki Falls hat. Oh, nope. Oh, 
Jeez, man, I swear I'm not flexing on you guys with my hat collection, all right? Uh, I gotta get this right hat, all right? Let's go. Gosh, man, what, what is wrong with me? Boom, there we go, guys. All right, we got the Tiki Falls hat on. Let's get busy. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we're pretty much all the way through to this side of the pond. Now, I pulled back the liners, uh, and you can see I dropped the water level down in this pond. I got to drop it a little bit lower. As you can see, the fish are still in the pond. I'm going to leave them in the pond because I don't want to stress them out and net them and put them in another, um, you know, pool outside of the pond. So that area right over there is a little bit deeper so i'm going to drain this side out all the fish will gather over there in that side of the pond and hang out there right here is our pipe i already uh got glue and we glued this cap this end cap here so this is what's going to go head first into that other pond and we're going to make sure that these holes are going to be on top of course we're going to put our sleeve over it too as well so it covers these holes it's almost like a pantyhose type of stocking so that way dirt sand won't get inside the pipe but the water will so that's what we're going to use and let me go get the sleeve we're going to sleeve it and then we're going to measure it and stick it right through here get it low enough and run it under the pond liners and stick it out eh, right about there that should be good enough and then the rest of it will come through here and then run the rest of the pipe through here elbow right here going up and then out all right so check it out this is the sleeve i just wanted to show you guys kind of like the material and what it's made out of it's like a a real thin i don't know like i guess like i said pantyhose you know see the sleeve just goes right over you can see the holes and you got the sleeve all the way down 10 foot of sleeve and you know the ends just open so we'll leave a little slack here at the end if i have to rubber band it or something like that i will but other than that it should just be fine just like this All right, guys, so I think I got it down to uh, the bottom of the pond. So let's run our perforated pipe. I had to actually drain the pond a little bit lower. We got our submersible pump. What? Right there, it's pumping out right over there. You can see it right there. I had to turn off the uh, filters and pumps, of course, so there's no waterfalls running here or here. But look at all that muck. God, I wish I could do like a big rinse down. And there we go, guys. Perforated pipe under the liner but you can see the fish over there they're kind of uh, probably getting a little stressed but i'm gonna go ahead and do a quick refill on that so as soon as i can get this pretty much dialed in which you can see it's running underneath the pond coming through here all the way to this elbow now this elbow here we're gonna cement we're gonna glue it in make sure it's nice and snug and then run a solid pipe up to this point another elbow and then we're gonna just run it out to that area here so all the hydrostatic pressure build up this uh up and coming winter season hopefully it works the water goes through these holes here as you can see them and because of the pressure that pressure alone will build up and push it up which is about maybe a foot high it'll push it up and then it'll just drain out it's at a at a slight decline so it's just going to be gravity fed out into this area of course i'll keep you guys updated in the winter time when or when or if there's any hydrostatic pressure let's go ahead and get this covered up maybe about halfway and then we are going to probably dig out this section to form a u and that's where we'll have the little canal that runs from that pond to this pond. You know, I want it wide enough to where, you know, the fish feel comfortable swimming through it. So 
Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll etch it out on this side over here. Something like that. We're gonna make it a nice little U shape. So yeah, that's the goal. So let's go ahead and do that. Fill it in and get this pond liner pulled back and the pond filled at least halfway for these fish. All right, guys, so we are done. All I have to say is my neck, my back. My neck and my back. No, but seriously, wow, what a workout. Um, you guys might be wondering why I'm using this metal hammer. Now this metal hammer, it helps me kind of sculpt the pawn on how I want it shaped. If I use the pickaxe, it tends to like bring out big chunks and I tend to get a little medieval with it. So we're gonna use just this small little metal hammer if you have a metal hammer like this i recommend it uh, especially when it comes to shaping your pond like uh, let me show you exactly what i mean by shaping certain little parts when it comes to like building the shelves like this here I'd rather just chisel away with this and make it nice and even on each side and you can see i filled in that little gap there with a bunch of pebble uh and there's some there's some dirt that's mixed in with it but for the most part it's all pebble and rock that's what we pretty much got going on so this is going to be it'll give you more of a visual this is going to be the ravine so this is where the liner is going to come up and slope down and the fish are going to be able to swim from point a to point b through here this is going to be like the little canal it's going to connect the two ponds together i wasn't going to go too deep and i wasn't going to leave it too high so i want it just enough for them to swim up and over into uh the abyss i guess you can call it so you can see the fish over there still in their little pool so we got to get this pond filled up so i was kind of on a time limit so we're going to pull this pond liner back fill this pond about halfway that way the fish look at them that way i can turn on the filters and we can get this fish pond going all right guys so there we go you can actually see the little canal that's been made see it this is gonna give me or us a general idea on how wide this little canal is gonna be which is perfect for the fish to swim through and then into this tiki falls 3.0 and then i went ahead and we ran perforated pipe all the way up we got the elbow and then all the way out as you can see this little section here goes up about nine and a half inches this is extremely important guys it just depends on your soil but if you're not sure it doesn't hurt to run one of these perforated pipes at the bottom of your pond and then you put your liner over the top of it now okay this is going to be under your pond liner it's just rather be safe than sorry because if it bubbles on you for whatever reason it sucks you gotta like maybe throw a pump down there a submersible pump and try to pump water out it's just a pain in the butt so this is just safe and you know what it's not that much you know it's ten dollars for ten feet of perforated pipe so you know you know a couple dollars for the elbows and then you know a solid piece with no holes is another ten dollars so you know you're probably looking at about twenty five dollars and you can see the pipe maybe you can't it runs right there through there and stops right there so i'll zoom in on it and see if you guys can actually see it it's not really you know it, it pretty much blends and then plus once we add the pond pebble to the bottom of this uh pond you're not going to be able to see it it'll cover it up nice normally you would dig a trench so that pipe can sit down inside the trench and then put pea gravel over the top of it same thing with this here you would dig a trench set this pipe down in the trench and then cover it with a uh, gravel that way uh it just stays flush with the pond uh, that's the way you're supposed to do it. This is kind of, I guess you can say, the uh, shortcut way, you know? Just because it would be a lot of work to try to tear this pond liner up and dig a trench and then run the pipe through. I'm just like, eh, no worries. This is already pretty much set with all the rock and stuff. So it's not like I have a lot of play to move the liner around. So, whoo, gosh, I tell you, it was a workout. So I hope you guys understood a little bit more in detail about hydrostatic pressure and why I got the perforated pipe. I was trying to explain it the easiest way I can. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to give this video a like, guys. And to all my new subscribers, welcome to the Ohana. I appreciate you guys. We got a lot more to do here on this pond. We're just taking baby steps in stages. That way for you guys at home, if you guys want to do a pond at home, make it nice and easy for you guys step by step. I'm trying to like cover all the bases here on building your DIY pond. I'll talk to you guys in the next video, all right? Much love and aloha.
Ah, no, pay, 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 p